We now have pattern matching in Dart 3. Let's take a look at what it is and my favorite cases of when we can use it. First off, let's just take a look at the documentation. Here we have the documentation for pattern matching in general. You can find this on the language tour of Dart.dev for patterns. Here you can see and read everything about pattern matching, some use cases, um, examples and all of that. You can also find pattern types. Here you can see everything you can kind of match patterns to. So for example, we can match to constants, we can match to uh, literals, whatever, everything else that we have here. But let's take a look at two of my favorite cases of using them. So now we're going to kind of simulate a state variable. I'm going to make it global and we're going to check at the old implementation code for how we can check if a value is not null and then execute a method. So let's just create a nullable value called um, name and just give it the name John. We're going to create a new method. Just do something. Uh, we're going to give it a required or a, a variable which is just a string name. You can see that this is non-nullable. We're just going to print it. So for example, if we would do something like do something here, we would say see that, okay, this requires a non-nullable type because our name is nullable and the required variable or the required parameter is um, non-nullable. So we would probably do something like if name is not equal to null. The type system is still telling us that this name variable is nullable. The reason for this is because the global variable of name could be changed anywhere. So we're not sure if it's changed during the time it has gone through the if case to then do the ex execution of the do something method. So something we would do before would create a local variable because then we could make sure that this variable is uh, not being changed. So for example, you can do final underscore name is equal to name. And instead of using the, um, the global variable, we can instead use um, this variable. Let's ignore that this is like underscore name. Uh, let's give name my name. I don't know. And we can see that, yeah, this is working as expected. With pattern matching, we can actually do another cool thing. So let's actually remove all of this. We're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to create our kind of local variable above the if case. So we're just going to start creating an if case. So we can do name because that's the thing we want to check. We can call case to make sure that we're doing a pattern match. And we can do final name question mark. So what this means is that we're doing, we're creating a new variable here, um, but we're using pattern matching to make sure that we only want to match patterns that are uh, non-nullable. And if we use a question mark, this just means that we're going to um, com continue into the if case if it's uh, non-nullable. If we do a exclamation mark, uh, we would actually use fail in this case. Uh, you can read this in so for example, you can see the null check, we have sub patterns, um, and you can go read all about this as well. But in this case, we have our new variable. So now we can do actually do something and we can pass name. In this case, it will actually be non-nullable. So we won't have to define something new, right? We can just do this if case and then we're fine. That's the first example of something I really like using the new pattern matching syntax. We're going to look at one of my other favorite ones. So let's actually just remove all of this. We're going to first actually create a enum. We're just going to call it access type. We're going to have admin user and then denied, I guess. Um, so now you can imagine that we would have two variables. This is just an example, but you might see this actually in your code. Let's define two variables. So we have a bool for has access. Let's imagine that that's true, but we also have a bool for is owner or something like that, which is false in this case. Actually, let's define a method. So it's going to return a access type. There we go. We're going to just call this method. 
So now we have two variables. So what we would probably do before is something like this, where you would first check an if case for have access, then you would check an owner. If you're owner, you return admin and then so on. In this case, we have constant values. That's why it's pretty much saying that some of the values are dead code. What we can do now is actually use a switch case with pattern matching and records together. So we can do something like return switch. And we want to check both of these values together in different combinations. So what we can do is add two new or like add two new parentheses to make sure that we're creating a record. The first value is going to be has access. The second value is going to be has or is owner. So in here we can start checking the different types. So for example, here we have true true, where the first true is for the has access, the second true is for the is owner. In the second case, we have true for has access, false for its owners, we return the access type of user. And the last one, we can actually use ignore all cases. So in this case, it will be denied. Um, and we can actually use double check all of this. So now we have true for has access and then false for is owner. We can just run this. We can see that we have now the access type of user. We can do so, let's imagine that is owner is true as well. We have the access type of admin. We can make both of them false. And we have access type of denied. And as you can see, what we have done here is using a switch expression. We have used records to create a new kind of variable in this case, or a record. And we can start like switching on top of this to then just return the different types here. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I also want you to share your favorite use case of pattern matching down in the comments. And you can probably check the recommended video here somewhere. I would assume at least, hopefully. Maybe it's good at least. Yeah.